Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Mu'ad Harizi. I'm excited and delighted to be here with you. Uh, Dr. Hatem, please analyze my statements. Hopefully I have no entrenched uh, Islamophobia. I feel like we all have to unlearn it and I'm being completely serious. So uh, let me know if, I, if, I'm, if I'm entrenching it in my own thoughts. But we heard a lot of uh, a kind of a tough stuff here to bear. Islamophobia being uh, targeted towards our community. Um, I tend to be an eternal optimist. So I want to tell you why I think that although this, this stuff is dangerous and deadly, will ultimately benefit our community. Uh, so my own experience of Islamophobia started uh, probably earlier than I can remember, but my first experience that really stayed with me was, I, I believe, around the age of eight or nine. Uh, so right after 9-11, I remember ev our family every weekend used to go to our same favorite restaurant, Friendly's, uh, every Friday. And that Friday, the first Friday after 9-11, I remember my parents uh, wondering whether we should go out. My mom was a hijabi and uh, obviously you have to calculate. You, there was a lot of nervousness. I'm sure everyone here remembers that time. Uh, but ultimately, we didn't want to change our pattern of behavior. And so we went to this restaurant. Uh, and so we got to this friendlies and we sat down, family of five. Uh, typically, a table would take 15, 20 minutes. And so we put our name on the queue and we ended up waiting for you know, 30 minutes, asked the management what was happening. They said, you know, we're really busy right now. Uh, and so we kept waiting. We waited for an hour, saw families come in and out. Uh, you know, we started to get curious as to why we were not being seated. And uh, the staff was extremely curt with us, didn't want to really engage. Uh, and so we ended up waiting for about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, and then my dad finally went up to the management and uh, we, we noticed the piercing stare at my mother's hijab that it ultimately wasn't a matter of how many tables were available. Uh, there were plenty that were, were open. It was a matter of us uh, being Muslim and recognizably Muslim that would uh, not allow them to serve us that day. And so as, as an eight or nine year old, I uh, went home that, that evening recognizing that my country would not serve me and my family because of our religion. Uh, and that, uh, th that, that leaves an impression on an eight or nine year old, uh, wondering whether this country was uh, ultimately in a conflict uh, with Islam and you know, whether we were uh, not accepted here. Uh, so it forced me to reckon with some of these really big questions that as an eight or nine year old, I probably was not uh, uh, you know, equipped to, to handle. Fast forward uh, to my junior year of college, I had kind of uh, suppressed a lot of these ultimate, you know, consequential questions about wh what was going on in America, but I was forced to reckon with them at the age of, uh, of 21 uh, as a junior in college. So as a student at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, uh, I was close friends with Dia Barakat, one of the three people who were murdered by an Islamophobe uh, in North Carolina by their neighbor because of the fact that his wife was a hijabi. Uh, and I had been to that apartment. I had, I had uh, stayed with him. I, I had met this neighbor and it was clear as day that this, this person hated us because we were Muslim. Uh, and so why am I optimistic if these things are happening to us? Uh, one, because it forced me, it challenged me to get involved in politics and government. I was going to study medicine. I was going to go out and kind of do uh, what the traditional Muslim path was, go become a physician. But this forced me to recognize that there was a real need uh, for us to get involved in politics, for us to get involved in government, because that was where we were seeing the most deadly uh, consequences for our community. And it forced me to learn more about our religion. Uh, it forced me to kind of take these questions and these smears and ask myself, you know, what, is, what of these are true? Are any of these true? How can we respond to these allegations? And it forced me to recognize that Although we have a system of law and order here, that the law is a man-made enterprise and that it is implemented by man and therefore is never perfect. That you know, when a person goes and murders their neighbor, that they can call it a parking dispute. That if this had been flipped and it was a Muslim who did this to somebody else, we would have known immediately it would have been a terrorist attack. Every single one of us knows that. And so what I ultimately realized is that running for office for me is about passing laws, but most importantly, it's about shaping narratives. And that the media and the way we disseminate information oftentimes uh, as Dr. Hatim and Ibrahim said, leaves out Muslims and leaves out Muslim narratives. And there's never a case that's clearer than this than Palestine. And even as a young kid, I used to notice we would have discussions about Palestine, but you'd never see a Palestinian on TV because they would never allow it because they know the power of information. That if people saw the truth of what was happening there or in other circumstances, that minds would change, opinions would change, and people would ultimately be, uh, be willing to, in my opinion, ch change the way that they uh, view Muslims and, and Muslims in America. So that, that's why I'm optimistic. These bad experiences that I've had have ultimately changed my, the way I engage with the world, what I plan to do. And uh, hopefully we'll see so many more Muslims getting involved in Congress, uh, well-equipped, prepared to handle, uh, to handle uh, the, the smears that come against us and really change the minds of, of Americans who 
uh, who, who are being uh, uh, kind of filled with these lies and misinformation. So my name is Maat Harizi, running for Congress in Connecticut. And uh, inshallah, hopefully uh, we'll have more, many more voices of Muslims in all levels of government to represent our community. Uh, which is that